Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Ben Stewart. Welcome back, Ben. Thanks. So glad to have you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, week two, you were back, and we looked again at Jesus, and this time with the social outcast. That's right. Um, we had several questions come in, some of them around engaging non-believers, right. um, one around engaging believers, and then one just about seeking God. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with what came in about engaging the lost or right. non-believers. Yeah. Um, the first question says that in the Bible, it says that bad company corrupts good morals. Mm -hmm. um, how do you balance that with saying that we're supposed to initiate conversations with the lost? What does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the short answer is what you see biblically is your central community, the one that has the greatest influence on what you think and how you behave. For the believer in the Bible is always other believers. But that community then launches out from that position of safety toward the unbelieving world. So even Jesus with his disciples said that. He said, I'm not praying that God would take you out of the world. I'm praying he'll protect you from the evil one, but I want you in the world. And he sent them out, but he sent them out two by two. He never sent them out all by themselves. Uh, he would send them out in community. And as you watch the church grow, it's always in community. The Apostle Paul traveled with an entourage. And so you see believers are always meant to do that. Have a deep believing Christian community that's a source of strength for you. And then from there, you launch out into relationships with the non-believers. And um, I could talk about that forever, but that's the basic answer. Yeah. Okay, good, uh, yeah. good. And so um, we talked about engaging people and inviting them to your home and being in community and relationship with those that are lost. Mm -hmm. um, a question came in around, about how, do you, how do you initiate doing this? If it's not something that you're normally do you look at yourself and you say, you know what, I'm surrounded by believers. What yeah. does it look like to begin doing that? Yeah, that's another great question. I mean, when I was in seminary, I had a buddy that he would go to the bus stop and he would just walk up to people and be like, you read the Bible, man, what's your deal? You know, and I was just like, How, what is he doing? It was such a nightmare, but like, he was so funny and winsome. Mm -hmm. He would make friends with all of them. Oh, he could totally pull it off. And, and I was never not weird in that moment. I'm like, I don't know how to do that. And I was like, maybe I just stink at evangelism. And I just thought, no, you just got to do it how you do it. And, and, uh, and for me, more naturally introverted, I start with praying. I'm going, okay, Lord, I want to be available and courageous enough to enter these conversations. Will you create them? And what I found for me personally, there's a couple things that have worked. One is, frank, frankly, frequenting places where I can have an ongoing connection mm -hmm. with non-Christian people. Because yeah. I work in a ministry. So... Same coffee shop, same haircut, same. And, and, and after they see you, after a while, you ask about their life mm -hmm. because asking people questions about their life typically shows a genuine interest in them. And you get to know people. And, uh, and in those conversations, often needs will rise and you go, this is an opportunity. Now do I just have the courage to take it? And so I ask God, will you create the opportunity and then give me the courage to speak and be unapologetically in love with you and inviting to people? Another thing Donna and I did, which was maybe the most socially leveraging out scary thing for me is we just invited all our neighbors to a barbecue in our front yard so we could all be out in, in the street together. And it was hugely socially terrifying for me to sit out there with my barbecue pit in my driveway and go, they might all be watching me from their windows <laughs> alone. And, uh, and they, they came. And it changed the whole dynamic in our neighborhood from being sort of everyone off on their own to saying hi to each other. And, and so sometimes you do go, this is scary, but I'm going to leverage out. But, it's good. Uh, and again, beyond that, I just say pray for opportunities and you'll see them. Mm -hmm. You'll see them in the lunchroom. You'll see them uh, everywhere you go. That's good. And talking about conversations, let's kind of turn now to a question that came in. Um, really about when you have a friend that's a believer and you, you want to address something that you see in their life that's maybe not what God would want for them or what mm. you see as the best. Um, the question really is, how do you do that without seeming better than them or like you don't have your own problems? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Jesus speaks to that. You know, I mean, Matthew 18, he's talking about um, if a brother sins against you, you, you go to them in secret first. So you don't 
You don't publicly humiliate them. If there's an issue in their life, you go to them privately to win a brother over. And then if they're uh, sort of belligerent or resistant, you, you start to move more friends towards them uh, and then spiritual authorities into their life if it's a really serious issue. Um, beyond that, he also says, you know, take the speck out of your own eye, or excuse me, the plank out of your eye to get the speck out, speck out of theirs. He doesn't say, hey, ignore the speck in their eye because you got a plank. He says, move them both out. Move yours out first and theirs out. So for me, when I feel like the Lord's call, calling me to confront somebody, I, um, I really go to work on myself first. If I want to have the right motives, I want to have the right words. I don't want to confront them in the way I do it, sort of come off superior. So I think about what I'm going to say. I ask the Lord to let me come and you go, what's the win? The win isn't to prove them they're wrong, but the win is restoration. Mm -hmm. And so I really ask the Lord to prepare my heart for that moment. And then when you come to somebody, I think you, you speak the truth in love. And that's what I tell people is you, you may have a true observation about their life that you need to share them. Funnel it through your heart of saying, hey, I need to talk to you about something that honestly I'm scared to talk to you about. There, it's coming through your heart. Mm -hmm. They're going, oh, this is personal for you. And go, um, there's a big part of me that doesn't want to talk to you about it, but... But because I love you and you're my friend, I want to address something I see in your life that concerns me. And so I just want you to know it's coming from a place of concern about you. If I didn't care, I'd go, oh, I don't mm -hmm. care, you live your life. And then you share with them the concern. Don't make assumptions of why they're doing something. Confront the behavior. When you say these things, it comes off this way. I just want you to know that. And they can say, oh my gosh, that's not my heart at all. And you go, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I just want you to know it sort of sounds like that. Or they can say, you know what? You're totally right. I have been judgmental or rude or what you know but you don't assume their motive just confront the behavior don't say hey you know what you've been kind of a jerk lately you know you say when you said this it felt this way when you do this it, it sounds this way and so confront the behavior and uh and do it in love good Okay. Yeah. okay, so there was one part that you just kind of touched on briefly. Mm -hmm. You were talking about um, seeking um, God because He seeks us, talk, right. talking about the seeking. Um, yeah. Can you just kind of clarify or expound on that um, was one of our questions. Yeah, I mean, Romans chapter 3 says, there is no one who seeks God. He says, no one does good, no one understands, no one seeks God, no, not one. So you go, how many people are out there seeking God? According to Romans 3, none, nobody. You go, what about that guy all alone on the desert island? It's like, I wish I knew God. You're like, there's no such guy. Like, that's not happening until the grace of God moves in and opens our eyes. You know, that's what Paul told the Corinthians. The God of this age has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever. They can't see the glory of God in the face of Christ. But the same God who said, let light shine out of darkness created the sun, is the God that shone into our hearts, right? To see the beauty of God in the face of Christ. So, so we know it's a miracle. People are not out there drowning and knowing they're drowning and wishing someone would throw them a life raft. They, they don't think they're drowning. They don't think they're water and don't appreciate being hit with life rafts. It's mm -hmm. most people's yeah. thought process until God gets a hold of them. And you'll see that in a friend's life where suddenly they're doing all the same things and they're going, it's not working for me. Or they'll know something's wrong where, and before they just kept coming up with bad answers. Now they go, I really need help. And there comes this humble, honest search for truth. And when that comes, when Jesus says, when you seek me, you will find me. Hmm. Because why? That very act of your seeking is God stirring in you a discontent, showing you conviction of sin. That's what the Spirit of God does. He convicts, right? And then converts. And so when I see that happening, you go, it's, it's God who's prompting you of saying you're not okay. And the same God who does that is the same God who rescues. So that's why we pray for our friends. Mm -hmm. God, convict them. Let them know. Open their eyes that they'd see that they need help and that they have, there's bigger answers out there than, than more money. And, uh, and uh, so when you see someone seeking God honestly and not just a religion that sort of okay is whatever they want to do anyway. When you see someone really seeking God, you know that's because God's at work on them. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I meant. Good. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for that. And thank sure. you for being here with us again. It's fun. Thank Donna too. We love having both of you. And yeah. I know you're looking forward to a busy season with three 
kiddos heading yeah. into the holidays. Yeah. So um, big Great first for sleep. you yeah. and uh, <laughs> what an exciting time it will be. Well, thank you for being with us. Thanks. Okay, and thank you for being with us here today. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.